So, <clears throat> I hope you're ready for some optical abuse, because we're about to go live with some Supers Genji. Now, they won 3-0, and I, I honestly, I don't, I watched like half a round. So I have no idea what I'm about to get into. I know that there's like the meme that leading up to the like, oh, Super Skanji, he's been like harassing Krusty about it nonstop. And I heard that it was mm, a little iffy. Um, I heard there were some high moments. I heard there were some low moments. We're going to start on the first map and get as, I've got like two hours. So we're going to get as much as we possibly can in two hours. And I'm expecting some pretty high highs and some pretty low lows. Now, I will say this, that two things, first off. First off, I'm going to be rude, because that's just fun. It's super. You have to be rude. The guy deserves to be flamed. His ego is ridiculously high. He needs to be thank deflated you, a little bit. Friend. SVB, thank you so much for the host. I appreciate it, brother. Um, but not only that, but the thing is with Genji right now is that we our, our expectations of the Super Genji isn't high, but my expectations for Shock as a whole are, are, are pretty high, okay? So... And the reason for that is, is because... Man, how have you been? Hey, Third J. I appreciate 16 months, dude. Holy smokes. Um, because here's the thing. You could insert any random GM Genji into the shock, and it'd still beat the majority of our teams, is my opinion. Team synergy is so incredibly important, and especially when you take somebody like Super that obviously, yeah, he doesn't play Genji, but he's probably mechanically competent at the hero, like competent, like GM level, barely. There have been massive off. But also, he fits in with the Shock's organization, right? He knows their team synergy. He knows their calls. He knows how they like to perform as a unit. So it's not like you're playing in even some random player. So yes, he's going to be bad at Genji, and we're going to laugh and slap our knees and cry a little bit, maybe. But it's not a surprise that a team like Shock can beat the Uprising when they have all of their units together. Like, the heck, they could even off-roll and swap roles, and they could still probably beat a couple of out teams, just because they're that good at working together. Okay? Shock has the best players in the world, but Shock also has players that are working super well together. And that's the case with any team at the top tier level. Um, I mean, there's even to a point where you could argue that there are players in the top tier of Al that aren't in the top five at their position, but they just fit in with their role, right? They bring something beyond the mechanics, the cooldown use of decision making. They just mesh really well. It's the same with contenders, it's the same with Overwatch League, it's the same in any eSport or sport in the world, and always has been. Where team coordination and working together synergy, that stuff is super important. So, um, it's gonna, I have a feeling this is going to be painful to watch um, sometimes, but it is not surprising to me that they won. Like, you're talking about the one of the most coordinated teams in the world of eSports, off-rolling one player who's probably not super bad. So, right now, the bands were Arisa... May, Widowmaker, Ana. Uh, leading up into this week, a lot of teams are playing basically Genji Arisa Sigma spam, where it functions like normal spam, but you incorporate Genji into it as well. And the reason you do that is because Genji is just ridiculously strong at damage output right now. He just puts out a high lot of spam damage. He can control off angles really well, so you put your Sigma on an off angle, you can spam out the shield really hard. And teams have learned to be able to, I guess, initiate with the Orisa so that the blade isn't just a throw, right? Blade in a spam comp doesn't feel like it makes sense, but if you can push with him, it works. He also has synergy with Brig because Brig is a necessity in spam comps, spam and dive comps, uh, because she prevents the enemy team from just playing dive into you, basically. Now, this week, the bans meant that you couldn't play Orisa. Uh, so teams are basically running Briggs and dive. And the way this works is... Yes, it's dive, but especially in early dives before cooldowns are forced and before ultimates are forced, you're not really going all the way in super hard, super fast. Because if you do, Brig still has cooldowns, Zen still has, uh, you know, will have a good position, the enemy tanks have good positions, and it's really hard to just dry dive a Brig Zen backline because A, Zen's going to melt you, and Zen's not going to instantly die because he's going to get armor packed. And this is after, I believe, this is the new Brig. And even with new Brig that can't overpack, her peel is just too good. Armor pack is better than Lucio Amp. Um, whip shot is too strong. Bash is too strong. And you have to keep in mind that Armor Pack does stack with Inspire. So it's like Lucio Aura plus Armor Plaque plus two, two peeling resources with Bash and Whip Shot. It's really hard to dive. So I don't expect either team to be very aggressive on their early dives. I expect it to be later as the fight devolves. Then you start to see a little bit more aggression from the from the from the front line. Maybe they trade cooldowns, where the enemy monkey doesn't have jump. Maybe the back line's in a really bad spot. So 
Um, this isn't just, oh, rush in and dive again and again and again. It's not going to work like that. Um, okay. So he TPs, get early position. Occasionally, I'm going to go third person to kind of get an idea of what's going on. Nice shurikens into the wall there. That's beautiful. Okay, so you're going to notice something right off the bat. This is really, really good. Uh, for a shock, they immediately get the high ground control. Now, sometimes teams are scared to fight for this. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe the shock rolls out in a brawl comp and, you know, uprising rolls out and brings in here and the brawl comps right here and that's pretty scary, right? Uh, so they, they roll out here. There's also something to be said for the cover that this provides. So either way, both teams are rotating in opposite sides of the high ground. Now, what this does mean is this does mean that Twilight is going to have excellent high ground control. So he's going to start off in high ground. He's going to be very safe from dive. There's really no way for the enemy uh, tanks on uprising are going to be able to get to them. Um, so for super... He is gonna go to high, he should go to high ground too, and he should literally just spam. Spam, 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 play safe, play safe, play safe, poke out the tanks and play to control point. Because remember, the question is, chat, can Shock right now just immediately dive in back here? No, there's no Discord, there's no Zen damage, there's no brick follow-up, it's all in a choke, it's gonna feel really bad. Yeah, this is not gonna be good. So he needs to be he needs to be patient. Spamming, spamming, spamming. Missing a lot of shurikens. <laughs> um, so like you really want your, like you really need your Genji to be landing shurikens in this comp, especially because it's so low healing as it is. Like a triple shuriken on a brig or uh, you know, on a diva, what's it? That right there is a free, that's a free armor pack. That you just force the enemy team with just your primary fire. And so far he's getting heavily outpaced and even pushed out by color hexes Genji. Really need to land those shurikens, Chief. But they do get point cap first. There's the there's the, uh, the so here's the card commit, chat. You see this? Okay, this is when we hard commit. Point is capped, and more importantly, look at look at the enemy teams from look at the uh, supports from Boston Uprising. Do you see this right here? Do you see this? Do you see how Boston has to like rotate the supports really awkwardly out here to get a sight line on a point? And as soon as they do that, Myungbong, he's got nowhere to go. He has to shift like six feet to the left and then back up to be safe, right? He's got backs against the wall. This is bad. This is really, really bad. This is not safe. So, point being is this is this is Shock's opportunity to actually go in aggressive because look at this. Look what Twilight can do. Twilight can Discord. You see this? There's a Discord right there. Discord's right on, I assume it's on Myungbong. It wasn't Punk. Yeah, so it's on Myungbong right now and they go in. And not only that, but I assume, well, yeah, Super actually lands some shurikens on Punk, so everybody's low in boss right now. So this is when you do want to go in. So Super does go in. He's got to commit the dash. Nice. Great dive. Back to his team. Don't need to overextend. So far, so good. Chat. I'm, I'm stoked. This is a good start. They get point cap. Boston rotates awkwardly. Uh, shot goes in real hard on a rotation. Super goes in safe. He hits his right click. He's in there. He's in and out. So, so far, so good. I, the, the immense disappointment that I was expecting is, you know, so far unfa- Who I made today's stream? I, I had- I've not- I swear I've not seen this before. I- I promise you I haven't seen this before. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate it, brother. Seven months, holy smokes. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what this is, but you guys that play DPS know that strafing like this doesn't do anything because your head basically stays in the same spot. I mean, if you look at this from Myungbong's perspective, look at how much Super is actually moving. He's really not moving at all. Look. Look at this. His head's basically in the same spot. And the way hitboxes work, He's basically in the same spot, and he gets his head blown off. Come on, man! And the, the, the hilarious thing about this, the ironic thing about all this, is he's doing this to try and actually land shurikens. But I want you to look at this shuriken actually, guys. Yoink. One shuriken. <laughs> Myungbong lands more projectiles in a quarter of a second than Super lands in like two. I'm like triple the hitbox. So yeah, Super gets absolutely destroyed. And by the way, 
if we actually go a little bit deeper here, chat, is there really any reason for Super to be on this high ground and not here? It's easier to land shurikens here, and you have more cover, and you can play around like climbing up, throw shurikens, climb up. You can make your hitbox more difficult to, uh, to poke. Easier for you to spam, harder for them to poke. It's like the best of both worlds. There's really no reason for Super to be here and not here because he's in a better position to spam. And once the team gets to get here, he wants to be spamming for Blade anyway. So there's really no reason for you to be with his backline. Somehow the fight is stalled out. I assume that Jerry just didn't have recall because committing dash into a tracer that does have recall is bad because usually it just means that you're out of position. Because right now if Jerry recalls here, super commits dash, he's now he's now basically out of the fight, right? That's the danger of committing dash, but Jerry just, just overstays. He overstays his welcome. Okay, so doesn't get punished for that. Shooting monkey is fine. He needs to be doing something here. He's not doing anything. Good shuriken, some color hacks. Let's go. Still not doing anything. Okay, they do back out. Okay. All right, so we're getting close, guys. I'm, I'm getting excited. We're getting close to play time. So, so really quick. Couple things that need to be talked about. Well, well ooh, he, <laughs> he almost dies again. Um, couple things that need to happen with Blade. So there's different ways you can lose blade. Everybody knows, hey, try and force transcendence so you can blade afterwards. Or you can blade force trance and then do something else after blade afterwards. That's fine. Everybody knows that. Good job. Congratulations. Pat yourself in the back. But there's more that needs to be discussed. Because remember, the first thing that we talked about is that just initiating really hard with blade here is going to be risky. We need Boston to be closer. We need them to you know, have more cooldowns forced. Um, and you certainly need your tanks to actually initiate with you. So at the very least, smurf. Because if Super goes in by himself, he's going to get bashed, and he's going to get discorded, and he's going to die. Whether he forces trance or not, he's not going to get any kills. So it's really important here that Super matches his tank's pressure and goes in with his team. If he goes in by himself with Blade, even if his team is like, you know, doing stuff up here and doing stuff up here, he's not going to kill anybody, and he's probably going to die. So obviously the trance mind game, dealing with does any team have rally, that becomes a problem. But then also he needs to make sure that he's actually not by himself like in this meta with the orissa meta you can't blade by yourself if you can the enemy team messed up and you know boston's a pro team they're not going to mess up they're, they're they're gonna peel the blade properly and it's gonna be problematic so poking here is fine put out some pressure again we talked about how like a, sing a couple of shurikens is so hard for this comp to heal up so really important that you land your shurikens poking tanks here i mean that right there that's like you know you see how much damage that was that's almost completely from genji it's like 200 damage that's really really important Okay, so rallies are matched. So you really don't want to blade during rally because you don't have nano, so you don't have enough damage to actually kill stuff. Just play patiently, play around space. Huge. Okay, this is magnificent. I don't. I assume Young Mung was just out of position. Yes, he's out of position. He's getting forced. Okay, so this is great. This is blade time. Okay, because what's happened is you've got two support ults forced. Rally's almost finished. Trance is almost done, so now all Super has to do is chill, he can poke tanks, I don't really care what he does, but play passive, don't get your cooldowns forced, and get ready to go in again when Smurf either gets his bubble back, or his jump back, or both. Mung Mung is a crack support player? Yeah, yeah he is. So right now, Monkey Jump, here comes Blade. Now, unfortunate that he doesn't have dash, because it could get a little bit more distance, but that's okay, because right now we can see Strikers in position, Smurf is going in. Choyobin seems to be pressing forward. All right, what is what is Super gonna kill here? Your team is going in! What are you doing? Look! Your, your D.Va, your Winston, your Brig is actually further forward than you are! Are you kidding me? Are you daft? <laughs> he can see his team going in. 
They've just used both support ultimates. He's full HP, and the man sits on point. I, I can't believe this. Okay, and we just win because, you know, shock. Right? I assume they win. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, so, I mean, okay. So he was doing a good job marking tanks. His shuriken accuracy was really poor. Um, he stood, he was a little bit poorly positioned on a couple things like standing with back lines and playing further forward, getting right click, that stuff sucks. And the blade was just awful. Like you have space, you have initiations, you can go in. Why aren't you going in? Like, I don't understand. You have your team with you. They've just you both supports. I don't understand the logic that goes behind that. Now, what I assume is that as much of a Chad that everybody thinks he is, he's probably scared, right? Nerves, you know, doesn't want to be memed. He's probably scared. Um, but the irony is that he's getting mocked regardless of what he does. So ha ha ha, humor, humor, slappy, slappy. Okay. Um, interesting, because so his team, they're fighting for this. Again, Boston with a weird rotation. This feels, maybe they maybe they've practiced this. In general, I've always thought that like, I've always believed that like backline in here whenever you can, unless the new team is like running brawl, is pretty good, right? You've got good cover, you've got good sight lines, you can, you know, socket test high ground if you want to. You don't want to just go high ground because it's a good way to get boofed, but you can play in here. Basa does these weird rotations. They're going main, and then again, they're going here. Now chat, you remember the very first dive that Shock did successfully where Boston was rotating with their backs to the wall. This is exactly the same kind of thing right here, where if they push here, this is right here, Either the, the uprising supports have to play here, where they don't have full LOS on the point, or they have to rotate this way, which feels really, really, really bad. Um, I, I'll move my mic a little closer. Thank you for the heads up. <clears throat> so, I'm, I'm not sure. This rollout feels odd. Okay, so I guess just poke, again, prioritize poking tanks. Prioritize poking tanks. You don't even worry so much about supports. So this this is it right here. So this is this is it, okay? Because, I don't, because Shock just gets the, the better position for this current meta, at least right now, at least from what I understand, is forces Boston to feel like they have to do something fast. And if they don't do something fast, then they're gonna lose the point, right? So, <clears throat> Right now, Fusions is in serious trouble. All what I'd want Uprising to do is maybe to try and get underneath the point where they don't have good sightings, but even that is tough. So again, like Uprising is forced to make a play. All Shock really has to do is peel this monkey and the monkey's dead. Like, you just can't be proactive with this comp until the enemy team is like in a bad spot. And right now, Shock is not in a bad spot. Uprising doesn't have any room to dive. Fusions discorded, his bubble is wasted. They have gained nothing out of that dive. Still poking tanks. I really like this. I really, really like that he's dropping, taking a different angle, and poking up tanks. By the way, chat, if you want something to blow your mind, um, the, the, the two reasons why Dive or Dive is struggling right now is because Break is still good. Well, obviously Orissa's bands of Dive is good, but because Orissa Halt is still a thing that screws staging dives. And secondly, it's Genji. Genji, ironically, is one of the best dive counters right now because he can position anywhere and he does so much damage right now that it's really hard to stage. So in other words, it's hard to set up your monkey on flanks or diva underneath so that they can jump the back line. Because every time they get close, Genji takes some absurd angle, throws shurikens, they have the back up. Or they commit at half HP. So, and this is this is a perfect example of it right now. Look at this, especially when combined, I think, Wizpunk discorded here? Yeah, so he's discorded. Like that that's massive value right here. Now he's not, <laughs> he's not landing his shurikens because you know, it is super, but like, this is really hard. And super almost nice. <laughs> Again! They do get punks, Mac. Again, I, 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 I'm a fan of the matching the dive. You already have good positions right now, so you don't need to be diving Boston supports. Why? Just peel them. They're, they're, they have to do something. They have to dive you. That's actually huge. Color Hex 
literally popping on here. What? It was that chat. My man's actually hitting shurikens right now. Kalahex just kills basically two people almost by himself. One, headshot. Two, headshot again. Misses one, body shot, body shot. Nice. And then that. <laughs> no, I don't think that's what you should do here, Chief. I think that was the fight lost. Okay, the fight was lost as soon as... Yeah, so Myung Bong, and then they just pop. They pop. So, well done to Boston. Delete Arisa and Brig. By the way, is my audio a little better here? A little bit louder? Can we see that from Colorhack's perspective? Yeah, really quick. Sure. So, Punk gets poked out heavily. His deflect is forced, too. That's unfortunate. Yeah, and Violet scuffs his... Yeah, so Violet scuffs his cooldowns really hard. I'm pretty sure he either misposition or he misused his bash. You could hear it clunk. Um, so that's actually unfortunate. Good deflect. Yeah, that's actually just... actually That's actually pretty big from Super. Those are good shurikens. Audio is really good. Sweet. Yeah, just in time. Nice. Okay, so... He's actually outpacing Color X in the blade, even though... They lost the fight. So, nice. So, okay. So, chat, again. Again, the, the, the question has to be asked. Support, are support ults on the table? And what position do you need to get your tanks and your supports in so that you can actually get kills with Blade? Because if they're rolling out here, and the reason that teams generally roll out here on retake is because sometimes it's hard to push through here when the new team already has high gun control. It's easier for them to, like, pressure you and spam you in here. Okay? So now... The question needs to be, what's the best way or the best position for Super to be able to get into a good position to blade? Um, because if he just blades now, his team is going to have to dive all the way in. Myungbong and uh, Halo are just going to S-key back, and they're going to be able to peel the, the, the dive pretty well. And remember remember what uh, Smurf was doing to Fusions when Fusions was just jumping from main on the high ground? Smurf jumps back, they bubble off fusions, fusions almost dies. They do it again, or Punk tries to get too far forward, Punk dies. So they need to find a way to patiently get space, build this blade, and then as soon as they see an opportunity to go backline, kill backline. Now, in the previous meta, before Arisa was banned, it was okay to, to blade frontline. You could kill Sigmas, you could force Arisa cooldown, stuff like this. But in this meta, it's really hard to kill frontline because frontline can just use cooldowns to get away. Um, but also, you're in danger of getting basically discorded and melted during your blade if you're not actively killing whatever's discording you so let's uh let's see how uh the shock take this so they're spamming 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 taking angles he was thinking about a flank there they go they go fast so now boston is flipping the table on them now they're the ones with a better position going in early now this is a little risky for fusion yeah they're just there boston has a position they go first kudos to boston not a lot uh not a lot that Super could have done here. I think one thing I might have done is maybe marking the monkey instead of the Genji. Because the monkey's going to be generally more consistent kill. Yeah, they caught Violet in rotation, yeah. So, so far, Violet has been the weak point uh, for two of these dice in a row from uh, Shock. Now, this, this is clever, okay? Now, chat, what do you see here? What do you see here? What this means... Is that Super can bypass all this careful planning and pathing and rotations and just immediately get to backline, right? Now the danger is, is he probably tracks Trance. So what I want Super to do is he needs to be sneaky. He can't get, if he gets scouted, he's screwed. He needs to be sneaky. He needs to blade from high ground, drop, he can press a Q, drop slash, and then he needs to dash out because he's going to force Trance because he's already on top of his Zen. He cannot commit his dash. If he commits his dash, he's going to die. Right, nobody's watching Super Singles. Exactly. If they scout this, then he's in a lot of trouble. Like, it's a high-risk, high-reward play, right? So, there's the Harmony, I think. Wow. So, huge. Okay. So, obviously, again, Boston is just being proactive. They're going. They're not waiting. They have positional advantage. They're going to go. Um, they're going to get Discord on, on Twilight. And somehow Violet must be misplaying this. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm really tempted to watch Violet's perspective, but I don't want to. I feel like Violet is not playing very well right now. These dives have been way too easy for Boston. 
Regardless, super blades, there's no zen, there's no trance. He surprises Myung Bong by flanking. So that's a really good play from super, the flank, because he doesn't even give him a chance to trance because he doesn't even know he's there. <laughs> he can blade this still. Slash dash, good. Gonna deflect here. Okay, unfortunate. Maybe they kill monkey? Okay, chat, that's a good blade. That's a good blade. It's And it's not just the blade that was good. His approach was good. He he got the kill in the Zen for free. And he kills the Brig. And he basically solo d the Diva. Now, his backline screws up hard. Which is why that there's not more follow-up from this. But this is a complete 180 from what we're seeing here. Like, I'm, I'm starting this VOD first blade. I'm like, holy cow, this guy is harder to carry than a 600-pound baby. But that was a flip side. And this fight is won because of that play. So, I don't know. That's And that's intelligence. That's, that's very, like, mechanics was fine on the little right click there, but that's a good play. My man might only be 55 IQ, but occasionally he makes the right decision. Young Bong just beats. Okay. Good shurikens, though. Commits. Unfortunate. Reset. GG. Okay. Next fight. And again, if you guys have any questions about this or Genji right now, let me know. Monologues are fun, but you know. Okay. Again, there's really, as long as he's careful about Zen right click, there's no real drawback to this. Like, you're going to be putting out so much damage, and it's so hard for them to shoot you. So, now, Myungbong still has trance. So what the plan needs to be is Shock, really all they need to do is they need to mark tanks, so shoot tanks, match support ultimates because neither team has blade so Myungbong if he trances to aggressively push in Twilight can match the trance if he needs to Violet can match rally um and the striker just basically basically either tracer looking for sticks with full spawn basically like neither team really wants to play this very aggressively both teams are going to play it for aggressively for space but shock has an advantage here because they're already in the good spot so right now that's that's massive this is absolutely massive by Striker. Because what has happened now is you have used one ultimate, you have forced two ultimates, and Shock just needs to play slow, and they can rally in, you know, three or four seconds. If you rally in three or four seconds, you can match their aggression, and we're all good. So let's see what Super does. Super just needs to play AFK. Spam shields play AFK. Farm blade. And no, don't die. Don't die. There's the rally. There's the primal too. Shock is in an excellent spot to win this fight. Don't do anything. Don't do anything. Just spam shields. Spam, 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 spam. I don't I don't really like him going for the Zen here. Um, Zen's, you know, got rally armor. You need you could be marking monkey right now. Um, I mean I guess it's okay that he doesn't like dive, but I want him marking tanks. You've got a shotgun, Genji. Use your shotgun. You don't only go for backline if you're going in hearts. Like right now, this is a called trance dive, yeah? This is when Super needs to go hard. And he does. That's nice. I just want him marking tanks before he does that. So big errors with Super's blade, uh, Genji so far was obviously that first blade, but he he tends to his, his spam sometimes is 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 not on tanks. Sometimes he wastes a lot of time trying to poke out uh, squishies when he could just be killing tanks, and this is goofy. Yeah. What? Hi. So my man tries to one shot a tracer, which is. <sighs> I mean, this is. I'm gonna be honest. This is pretty pretty risky. Cause like yeah, you can maybe force recall, but remember we talked about this. If she if she don't one shot her, if you don't catch off guard, then you're in no man's land. Like right now, Genj Super's in, in a pretty risky spot. I think my major concern. So chat, here here's the problem. Here's the problem right here. This is the biggest problem. I'm sorry for the constant beeping. Like blame the replay viewer. The problem here is the location with which he's choosing to blade is not a fully committed rotation. 
Okay, so rotation is basically, I want to go from point A to point B. But if you blade here, Myungbong very easily can press the button, right? All the way up and, you know, bash and whip shot and discord and spam and all that stuff. And it's easy for Boston's tanks to just peel back and kill this off. Right? Like, look at this. Where is there going to be the follow-up to this blade? Yes, Smurf is going in, but you're not going to get Discord. You're not going to get Armor Pack. Your, your Tracer is not even in position right now. So, so like, look at Striker. See Striker? Do you see this? Striker has to blink, like, through here, all the way through here, and then everybody just kind of, like, crashes through this choke instead of taking angles to go at it. And right now, Choi doesn't even have, like, boosters. I don't, I'm not sure if Choi would, wants to peel here or go in, but, like, this is, this is this is not well-timed. This is too soon. If you let them come in here first, like let them, uh, just as they come in here, and then you go, then you're gonna be all set. You're gonna be all, you're gonna be all set. But right now, Super is like pressing W into the, into a choke. And this does not feel good. And the worst part about it too, is he's blading on the floor too, which is always risky. Easier to get shots, easier for Winston to cleave you, easier, most importantly, to get bashed, all that good stuff. So he does get a bit of a monkey bubble, but this right here, Bash. Headshot. Headshot. We don't have bash. Does he bash away? He must bash away. He must... Does he whip shot? He's got to whip shot this. This is an easy whip shot. That should be better. Bash away. He doesn't have whip shot. Where's my whip shot? That should be better. Shield's holding. Hmm. There you go. So this is why Super gets value out of his blade when he shouldn't. That should be better. Clang, monkey bubble. I'm sitting here like, how is he doing this? Free pack here, cleave one. Yikes. Let's see it from Mon Young Bong's perspective. He just S key out. And he's still almost dead. If he whip shots this, Super is dead. And worse than that, Super dies, support lives. Striker is going to have to recall. Does Striker even have recall? He does. Striker is going to have to recall. And they're going to be able to peel Smurf's primal. So, I mean, this is this is the margin of error. Yeah, the bash is fine. Bashing out to avoid slash is fine. But the whip shot is is rough but yeah this is this is not this is not a good blade because like, i could see right now super is not getting healed he's not getting healed he's not gonna survive i mean he shouldn't survive this jerry doesn't kill him okay so, anyway this is do, do you see why this blade should not work this was a really poor decision from super the blade idea was fine the timing was not so blade timing was bad um and then not marking tanks enough is a problem Okay, so we're going to move on to the next map. I don't know what comps were played on the other maps, and I don't even know. Okay, so it was Hanamura. You guys have any questions so far? Should Halo have not gone for the whip shot on the Winston? So the whip shot on the Winston is something that you have to be careful about when you are expecting Blade, but it's not a bad thing to do, but you have to land it. Because if you think about it, Smurf did put in a decent amount of damage and pressure early on right he got good cleave on the brig he got good cleave on the genji and if he doesn't get that initial damage maybe um you know maybe uh um, um i'm thinking here super doesn't get the double shot one shot because the brig will be closer to high hp because the bubble is what enabled them to be low so that super was able to finish them off when should you whip shot a winston away i mean as much as you possibly can but he needs to do it earlier because the, because yes the m m monkey can always bubble earlier but remember if he bubbles earlier he will have to walk outside his bubble to get to you so for example i really want to i really want to really talk about this super fast i know this isn't specifically on topic with super skinji but it's a really really important because if if halo Whip shots 
right now. Just a second sooner. Yes, Smurf might bubble, but his bubble will drop here and he will be outside of bubble right here. He'll be outside of his bubble. Do you see that? Now, his bubble hasn't cast yet. It's a visual bug. But his bubble wouldn't be where it was. He would either get booped or he'd have to bubble like here instead of here, which means he'd have to walk outside of his bubble to be able to cleave the back line. It's like trying to use bubble to block sleep. You're, you're scared to because if you don't bubble early enough, you might get slept. But if you bubble too early, then yeah, you'll block sleep, but you have to walk outside of your bubble to actually kill what you're trying to kill. In which case, if Halo hits a swift shot, either he doesn't take that initial burst of damage, you see his HP, he doesn't take that initial burst of damage, that he never gets healed up, and Winston is unable to get the pressure early, and either Smurf dies or Smurf is out of the fight, one or the other. Jane level reviews? I'm struggling to read that comment. <laughs> is, that, is that a compliment? Is that an insult? What am I missing here? That's like the like ambiguous chat. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay, so same kind of concept here. Same kind of stuff here. For those of you that have paid attention, um, I'll go into this more in a second. Can anybody... Yeah, it's toxic. Can anybody tell me why they're running Sigma here and not D.Va? What is the general rule of running Sigma over D.Va? There's a couple of little things that have to do with it. Um, but anyway, the, the overall mindset is the same. Um, you're, you, you're not hard committing, especially into a comp like this. You're spamming, 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 spamming. You're going to look for a discord. Maybe you hard commit as the fight devolves. So fight devolves, maybe get a discord. They don't have cooldowns. You can commit. But like super is essentially playing a spam hero now. He is playing a spam hero. As soon as he sees his comp, I'm spam hero. I'm punishing shields. I'm punishing tanks. I'm farming backline. I'm going to dash only when I really have a good escape route or when we're committing. And I promise you guys that we're not committing early. Hold angles from flankers, sure. Same goes from where you want to control space, sure. Simply can hold the high ground, sure. Um, uh, same goes for spam, long angles, right, exactly. So basically, Sigma is just here to play, to spam, 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 spam. And because you're on defense, you're on defense, right? Smurf doesn't need help when he's diving people. Smurf is just gonna hide. Smurf is gonna hide, he's gonna drop and spam, right? Or he's gonna hide around the corner and stick out and spam. So he doesn't need Matrix to be able to move in. Matrix is, Matrix 90% of the time um, is used for your monkey, right? And the other 10% of the time is used for your backline in these comps. Because with Brig Zen, you don't really need Matrix in your backline. You, your Brig is enough peel. So what the Matrix does is it lets your monkey move forward and take space and dive without taking damage. But right now, your monkey has all the space. You're on defense. You could play anywhere you want. And he doesn't. he's not going to be taking spam until the enemy team pushes into him. And he can just jump away. Monkey doesn't need to use his jump to initiate. So he doesn't need the Matrix. And your Troyopa could just spam the chokes. Which he's going to do a lot better than a Diva would. So anytime you have a good long sightline or your monkey, maybe you're playing like a ball, ball Sigma, you don't need D.Va for ball. Ball doesn't need Matrix so much as he, he, he could, maybe, maybe a Zari would be better, right? But Sigma would be fine there too. Um, um, and the other thing too is right now D.Va is pretty sketchy to play because Genji farms her. Like he does, again, we talked about it. Genji has a shotgun and any tank that has a wide, big, fat, ugly hitbox like D.Va is just going to bleed ult charge. Sigma, way better at dealing with Genji in terms of not bleeding ult charge right now. He just doesn't care as much. So, all, all literally all Super needs to do is spam, spam, spam. Listen, I don't know what their comm structure is like, but listen whenever Smurf is pressuring and then like turn up the heat a little bit. But he doesn't need to do anything. Maybe match Discord. Like, there's really not a whole lot. Now, the reason I am a little concerned, though, is while it's on paper, an easier Genji style to play. Um, it does mean that he needs to hit his shurikens because obviously Shock doesn't really have a lot of damage to beat Uprising his Brawl. They have Discord, they have Sigma, which is good, and Trace is decent at that too. And Genji should be better, but you have to hit your shurikens. So if you don't have your shurikens, you're in, pro you're in trouble. On his band, so he can help be a little more self-sufficient. Yeah, exactly. So Sigma is very self-sufficient. That's another good point. He doesn't... We're still right here. The question is, is Shock going to commit in here? The answer is, heck no. Absolutely not. Unless they get a pick or two, there's zero chance they commit in here. All they're doing is building ult charge, putting pressure, probably trying to build primal. Maybe they get lucky and get a pick, 
But all Super's doing is committing dash, melee spam, whatever, and he's going to back out, back into his support's LOS. And Striker's going to pincer. You notice this, by the way, chat, do you remember the blade on Oasis that I did, the, the blade Super just did that I didn't like? Why it's why it felt scary was because Striker was pushing through main like this, right? That felt bad. But look at what Striker is doing this time. He's pincering. So any damage they get, anybody they get low, Striker can finish off. And this, Halo has a very high chance of dying here because of that. Young Mungus gets discarded. He's very low. There's a lot of cooldowns forced. It's a good dive. There's a there's a very high chance that somebody dies there. So well done. So now, again, they know they're going to rotate through here. So Super and his team need to set up and get angles around because they're going to rotate from here and they're going to rotate right to point. And something either needs to die or they need to force a lot of cooldowns from the new team to make that rotation. Get into position. Yeah, boy. Okay. Not 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 great scouting from Super. So... You need Super or Striker, preferably Super, to be scouting this rotation better. Um, and Super right now is set up for them to rotate from this way, but Boston pulls a fast one on them and they go co-site. And this is a problem because Striker is not set up well, Smurf is not set up well, and most importantly, the person reviewing, Super, is legitimately out of the fight. And they get to go to point for free. Now they can do it now, but now they're already on point. And unless... I mean, unless Boston really screws this up, and unless Shock actually lands a boop, Shock Popper's is a pretty good spot to win this. Like they just made this rotation for free; they took no damage. This rotation, they took a lot of damage. This rotation, they took no damage, and it was because Super was not scouting. Super needs to be scouting. You need your Genji to scout. He's mobile. He's small hitbox. He doesn't get his cooldowns forced. This is a good rotation for Boston. And he's not taking an angle either. Like, he's in a bad angle. Smurf just dies. Now, Boston needs to actually push this, though. They shouldn't be AFK. Like, you, th there's a brig in it. Like, like, Boston, W key, guys. Like, don't let the Genji Tracer just live here and spam. Push the brig. Violet should die. Go! They just get up played. And that's the margin of error, guys. Like, that's the margin of error. I assume Shock loses this, right? Yeah. Okay. That's the margin of error. Bad scouting. Super doesn't get a good angle. They don't actually punish. Because if if they scout that Shock is going co-side, this is where we dive. This is where we punish. And there's a significantly higher chance of people dying here. Because they're going to have good angles, good spam, uh, good Discord LOS. Instead, they get to point for literally free and nothing happens. So, it's no good. This is really concerning for a shot. They do use coal, which is good. It means that they can't just snowball this. This is fine. Extra spam, extra spam, extra spam, extra spam. You need to build this blade. And, and, and chat, how would you use blade versus this composition? Hmm? Does Rally counter Nanoblade? No. Not if it's executed well. If the Rally, if the, if the, if the Brick hits a cooldown, um, like it plays, plays really well with her Bash and Whip Shot, yes. But it is, let me put it this way. A good Brick versus a good Genji, the Brick is going to outplay the Genji's Blade like 40% um, of the time, 30% of the time. Because she has to guess. If Genji plays it really, really, really well, this positioning, and has Nano, no, it is not. Just like um, uh, Flux does not counter Nanoblade consistently either. If it counters Nanoblade, it's because the Genji screwed up. Because you should one-shot somebody before you're able to actually sh uh, uh, Flux the spot where he's blading. Uh, uh, Flux counters not Nanoblade, but it does not counter Nanoblade. Uh, blade Sigma, sure. Force cooldowns, sure. Pressure the Sigma properly, sure. Zoning Blade, yes. So all of these are good answers. All of these are good answers. The big idea is that you're not going to just go, oh! Blade in, W key, all good. What you want to do is you either want to, um, uh, you really want to let them get to point pressure or like get them on, maybe on before they even get to point, like blade here, and then blade, maybe force your your, your Reaper shift, maybe force Moira or maybe force Amp, force Rock, um, uh, force your Genji dash, like whatever you can force, and then your next play, you're going to actually get kills with it. Because these guys just have too many 
these offensive cooldowns. You got Reaper, you've got Dash, you've got your Rock, you've got your Amp, you've got your Moria Fade. You're not really gonna get kills out of this blade, at least dry. Now, if you blade later, you can get kills, but right now, Shock doesn't have anything to follow up yet. So what Shock needs to do is they need to blade on rotate, try and build blade, blade in rotation, and then win the fight with Rally. That's disgusting. Okay, that's... This is what Shock has done now twice in a row with the Striker Stick that forced double support, Rally, and Trance, and now Pulse on the Sigma on rotation that it's just a free fight win. Like, that's tough, man. That is real tough. Because now, now Shock doesn't need to use anything. They just need to play slow, play it safe, and they, they can't do anything. I mean, they commit Rally... Which is, I mean, I guess fine, but really wasn't even necessary. But Super is doing a good job of scouting. I, I mean, it's pretty pretty easy, but at least he did it. He's doing a better job of scouting now than he was at the start. So when the enemy team is taking a rotation, do you pretty much always want to take the fight aggressively and cut them off in rotation? I mean, it depends. If you have the cooldowns and ultimates to do so, yes. The best time to fight an enemy team is when they're moving from point A to point B. But the problem is, can you actually kill them there? Like, if, if you're shocked, can you, is it easy to kill them on this rotation here? No. It's like, you can't see anything. Your supports can't see anything. It's a bad spot, right? What about this rotation here? I mean, no, because you'd have to push through a choke, right? So that's bad too. What about this rotation here? Maybe if you're holding high ground, maybe if you've got like brawl, but the danger is obviously that if your Zen is playing like back here, he can't help, he can't do anything. So then the question is, is where's the best rotation for you to punish? And the answer is this rotation from high ground to point, because that's where your Zen brig are going to be able to see and do everything that they possibly can. And so out in the open, you've got all the high ground, all that stuff here, but it depends on where you're set up. Like, let's say you're Zen Breaker on high ground and you really want to go aggressively with like Rally Blade, then you can then you take the fight right here because you're not worried about being outside of your Zenyatta's LOS because your Zenyatta's already on high ground. So you always want to take the fight in rotations, but you take the fight in rotations where your whole team is can see, basically. And that's the problem with, I, I, I hate to bring this up, but that's the problem with the uh, the shock one, we're all ready to take this fight here, but Uprising pulled a fast one on them and they go here. They can't dive this rotation anymore because Super wasn't in a position to see, Striker wasn't in a position to see, and I guarantee you that shock supports weren't in position to see this rotation. So they couldn't just go, oh, they're going Coastite, we're going to go anyway, because it's too late. They didn't scout it, they weren't ready for it. So, not the end of the world for Uprising, because Rally was used, and Rally is the strongest ultimate in the game right now. I mean, Rally and EMP, but EMP is not meta, or Summer's not meta, so Rally is just absurdly strong. So that's off the table right now, so Boston can actually kill people now. Um, so what I want uh, Super to do here is like keep spamming the angles, um, but you really can't play this super fast, because you need trance for flux. Um, or, or, or blade and you don't really want to initiate hard with your primal either because primal in this uh, meta or in this composition in this matchup it's basically just so your monkey has a second life you don't like use it as like a fight win condition you can split people but it's more of like what opportunities you see so super needs to be smart he needs to be smart here I know that's like kind of like an oxymoron here super being smart that's kind of kind of like low tier bait but you know whatever it is what it is <laughs> okay spam 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 It's fine. This flux is fine. <clears throat> now, what this flux is going to do is this. This is this is an opportunity for Super to blade this because it's going to force, uh, you know, shift. It's going to force. There's the Moira orb. Uh, it's probably going to force an amp as well. Uh, it's going to split the enemy team. It's, this means that this shield, this Reinhardt shield, is going to be low. Might force shift from your Moira and your Reaper. Now you have a blade. Omega lol. Right, right. Top tier humor here. And I'm expecting, yeah, so there's the there's the Smurf Primal for the second life. Now this is Blade time. Okay. And when you Blade this, you're blading it as safely as you possibly can. And your only goal is to kill one person. Especially because it's 2 CP, but because it's going to be hard for you to get these multi-kills. You've got a Primal, you've got a Moira and Cole, which means you can't dash. I don't want Super to go for backline here. I want Super to go for the easy kill, which right now is unquestionably punk. Fine. 
Unfortunate, Choyobin dies, but <clears throat> you force beat. Probably would have been nice that just your flux would have forced beat, but not optimal. By the way, chat, can we take a moment to pause? And can you guys tell me why I think this flux wasn't super well timed? What's the problem with this flux, chat? So, so far, I don't think Super's made any mistakes on this defense so far, at least any major mistakes. What's the problem with this flux? Think about what I just talked about with rotations and sightlines and things like this. What's the problem? You have everything that you need to know on your screen right now. What's the problem? Exactly, Pear. Where's my Discord? Where's the follow-up here? Like, look at look at Smurf. He has to like go inside. Twilight gets no Discord. The only target that they actually are focusing is a target with a shift ability. If Choi Obin could play this a little bit slower and back up and flux here, this is where you would get guaranteed. I promise you, if Choi Obin can S key a little bit further away and they flux here, they force beat just like that. I promise you. And it's only because it has nothing to do with these advanced strategies. I'm telling you, it's not complicated. You just wait so your team can see. I press Q when team helped me. Choi Open did not press Q when team helped me, so he doesn't force B. Right? And if he forces B with flux, then you can actually, then Super might actually pop off with this blade. Right? Would have guaranteed force blade. Or beat, excuse me, and it would have meant Super could have had a good blade. Because Super's blade here is good. Because look at Choi, look at Punk, excuse me. He's discorded. My man is discorded. And he's discorded because Super actually waited to do something when his team could actually follow up. It's not hard. So I have no problem with what Super's doing. I have a problem with Choi Oven. So right now, all Super needs to do is he needs to find opportunities. Play very safe, look for an opportunity. You know, uh, Fusions is low, Color Hex is low. Find somebody low and finish them off. And or match what your team is doing. Right? Looks like he's going to be stalling point. Yeah, so Color Hex, like, this is, this is the Boston problem, right? This is the Boston problem, okay? This is the Boston problem. this he's in by himself he dies amazing primal by smurf but a little bit of a questionable dash yeah and he's gonna he's gonna die for that too that was a questionable dash you don't do that you don't you don't dash in like that unless you have a reason to do something and or you have an escape route now if he wants to dash this way and then wall climb up then then sure i'm a fan of that but what, what does this dash do? 50 damage? I mean, big whoop. So what? 50 damage on a Reinhardt, you might as well, you know, you know, slap an elephant. It does nothing. And then he dies because of it. Where he could be still alive, spamming, 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 right? Maybe landing triple, you know, triple headshot shuriken on the real ulting reaper. Boston should cap this. And they will, looks like. So this is, this is not, so Super screws that up hard at the end, but, you know, Choi, Choi chokes it. Like, it's a bad flux. 45 because of armor, good point. It's not even, uh, not even 50 damage. Okay, so, Boston right now is running more of the quote-unquote meta spam. Now, you guys remember that this was run with Arissa. People were running it with Ryan because, you know, Arissa's banned. The comp basically functions the same, where you're playing a spam comp, but you're playing it with Ryan, which means, uh, well, even with Arissa, you could, you'd spam, 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 enemy team rotates, or they use cooldowns, so you can push into them with your Arissa Sigma Brig. You can get in there and swing, and your Genji goes in, you land in there with Dynamite, nice, big, big, big. Like, the Arissa Sigma Brig comp was super fun, because it was like a dive spam brawl comp, right? But with the Rhine, it's even heavier on the Brawl. Like, this is legit a Brawl comp with some spam elements in it. Um, you run the Bat Brig because it's a really good anti-dive setup. Um, basically, just prevents the new team from just winning with dive. You run Genji because Genji's strong. You run Ash because Ash's strong. You run Rhine Sig because Arissa's banned. And Rhine Sigma are still flexible. So, 
I, I, I think this is this should be very tough for Shock to rotate. Uh, it should be very tough for Twilight to survive because for you to be able to beat this map, you either just need to kill them from this choke or you need to be able to rotate like Uprising did, either right, left, main, whatever, and be able to find it, uh, be able to get kills. But the problem is when you're playing this with Zen, when your tanks rotate, you have no HP to rotate with, and your Zen is extremely fragile. So going from here to here, Zen could get you know pressured by Genji. One Ryan swing, he dies. Maybe a si single Sigma uh, volley off the wall, a dynamite. That stuff is scary, boys. Like so, this is I don't. I don't know. I haven't. I don't know what this band meta was because last time when I coached, we weren't playing with bands. But this feels like Shock's comp is should be hard to play. But again, I, I don't. I don't. I'm not confident on that, so I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not reserve judgment on that. I'm going to reserve judgment on that. Um, I don't really like Punk being here though. Punk doesn't need to be on high ground. In this meta, you don't. You don't split your tanks, especially you. Don't, you don't split your tanks, especially when the enemy team is playing dive. You can punish chokes without split tanks. You have your you have your hit scan off angle, and you can just peel your hit scan. Okay, fine. So this is bad. And oh man, that forces lamp too. Punk shouldn't be here. And really, Myungbong shouldn't be here either. Myungbong should be back here. This is not good. All right. I mean, but I mean, you see an opportunity, they call the dive, they go in, fine, sure, fine of super. And this is why, this is why, you know, Jerry could be playing here, he could be playing, you know, main, um, it's really fine for Colorhex to be doing what he wants, although I prefer Colorhex to be playing here instead, instead of this far back, I don't really know what he's doing here. I mean, now, now, yeah, this is way, way too easy. Shock just have the entire map. This is really poor. Um, they're just too split. They're too split. You can't split like that. Zero reason for you to be splitting like that. This is not old Bap Zen Hanzo Mei meta. It's not how you play. Good angle. Now you're gonna notice something. That when Super Dash is here, chat, why is why is this dash gonna be more safe than it has a right to be? In other words, like why is he gonna get away with committing like that? Right? What's going on here? Um I, I don't want to talk about that black decron. That's a little bit of a complicated question. I'll maybe answer that when I have more time. And in the safe spot, right? He's got his back, he's got an angle, and he has uh wall climb. Yeah, you still have, you still have escape options like to get away. You have a health pack here. You can get away. Like you can commit dash because he knows if this Ryan turns around and starts swinging him, he knows exactly where he's going. And his team is engaging exactly. His team is doing something. So Boston has no space. They just get surrounded and die. Boston had the better comp in my opinion, and they still lost. And they lost so cheaply. Oh, I've got a hair in my eye. So, again, we have the same scenario all over again as first point. Where you have a nasty choke through... I mean, either way you cut it, you've got a nasty choke. And Boston has just the better comp to stuff the choke. And they don't even have to stuff the choke. They can let them come through the choke and then completely run them over. So what I want Boston to do is just AFK and then just smash through once you scout it, they push through. And it doesn't even matter. They don't have an ultimate. There's nothing they can do. So what Shock really needs is they really need to farm this rally before they walk through the choke. Otherwise, they're going to get run over. Um, what Super can do is he can try an off angle and soften up the choke. Basically so that you can pressure tanks from an off angle so that it's harder for them to press through the choke at full HP. But the danger is that Jerry is on an hit scan, which makes it, he can, you know, he can blow Super's head off if he messes up. So I don't really want Super standing with his tanks right now. I don't really like this. This is really not what your comp wants to do. Okay, now... 
Where Boston? Hello? Do something. Right now Boston just needs a W key on the toilet. Toilet dies. Chat? Do you see what I see? San Francisco Shock right now is doing their best to end the child hunger problem that we have across the world. This, this is this is feeding the hungry right now. This is dumb as rocks right now. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I don't know what's going on here, but this is this is legit. You know, uprising does this number. They right? they plug the nose. They go ah. They just drop and they die. And they bob in there and they die. And and shock just dies. Now they're coming up close to support ults, but this is bad news, man. Okay, so right now, right now, what is, what is Super's job right now, chat? What is something that he he should be looking for along with Smurf? Will there be viewer vibe reviews today? Probably not. Although there's something I'll probably, it depends. I have a lot of stuff today. Fight the Ash, yeah, maybe. I don't, don't be super specific. Be a little bit more general. It's the first time in my life I want people to not be super specific. Farm Blade, just use it. I mean, fine, sure. Yeah, basically go where he is. Right, so just basically, I want him to look for squishies that are by themselves and kill them. And I want him to match what Smurf is doing if he can. So like right now, I don't like, I don't, I mean, he's got rally armor, so I guess it's okay. But like, he needs to be careful. This is fine. It's fine. Totally fine. Find the solo off angle, kill the solo off angle. You've got Rally, you've got Blade, sure. I would have liked him to match what Smurf is doing, but I think Smurf is bubbling off Bob or something goofy like that. So, fine. So, chat, we've seen a round and a half, or a map and a half of Super's Blade. What do you guys think so far? What are some general reads that you're getting from Super? What do you think of the things that he's doing well? What do you think of the things that he's doing poorly? Um, I have my read on things so far. I want to hear what you guys have to say, though, first. Giving me a stupid thumbs up meme is not good. That is not That's not informative or good at all. That is a waste of space. It is worthless. Shame on you, meme machine. <laughs> no, stop. No, that's, that's incorrect. No, stop. You're, you're rapidly dropping IQ here. He's pretty conservative. isn't making too many slip-ups, but he's missing a lot of clutch potential to not actually step up. Okay, so he's not clutching a lot, okay? Doesn't need a hard carry. Just needs to get value, not feed. Uh, he doesn't seem to be engaging the Smurf that much, going with the same angle as an integrated blaze. Going for his yeah, so, like, I, I'm, I kind of agree with you guys. Like, I think that he's missing some opportunities sometimes, and sometimes he's a little bit disconnected from Smurf. Um, but for the most part, he's just like playing really, really smart. He's not mechanically flashy at all for, you know, obvious reasons. Um, but he's like consistently online with the, the general game plan of the composition he's playing. <clears throat> and he's not making many mistakes. Like the, the first blade he had was actually awful. Like so, so bad. And really the blade on Oasis, um, the one where he goes inside and kills the Briggs End, that was a bad blade too. <clears throat> not a plan. Not a fan, excuse me. Um, but everything else so far has been relatively conservative, mostly fine. He's lucky that he has a good team behind him. He turns more or less bad decisions into good plays. Exactly. But I, I do want to give credit where credit is due, that he's not inting, and he's not playing way, way, way too passive. He's playing a little too passive, but he's not overly passive. He's doing his job. Like, right now, what he's doing is the right play. This chat, by the way, is what Boston should have been doing with their comp. Um, the Genji should be here. Your Reinhardt and Sigma should be here. Your backline should be here. And you can just stick Jerry, like, here-ish, and where he can land dynamites from an off angle. And you do this... And you punish their rotations, and like you have your Genji literally over their head, who can just punish them as they rotate. And then as they push out, your Ryan and Sigma walk into them and beat the crap out of them as they push at the choke. They can't walk out the choke without getting punished, and they can't make you back up because they don't have a shield. They had a monkey, right? I'm talking about um, San Francisco's attack. This, the, it's Shock has a better setup for Brawl playing dive than Boston had for Brawl, or for playing Brawl themselves. Sorry, my, 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 like right now, like, I don't know what Boston's doing. They're like half pressing W and then half rotating. This is why you play above the choke. This is really good positioning from Super. Oh, 
Not overstaying this welcome. A lot of pressure. And notice that shock is one up. So do they just AFK? No, they keep pushing. They don't int, but they keep the pressure up. Now, what I want, we'll see how much. Oh, look at this. Look at the pincer, boys. Look at the pincer. Look at the pincer. No rotation for you. This is good. They took a lot of angles, super pressed the angles, and they weren't, you know, there was no surprise rotations there. They never even got to that point. Patience, patience, patience. Here comes the blade. They survived the cold. That's massive. That was not good. Okay. Chat, why was this not good? What's the problem here? What's the problem here? Major, major problem. I mean, this is it right here. This is really the first major error that we've seen in this map. You have no escape. You have no team follow-up. You know your monkey doesn't have bubble, and he doesn't even have jump. Well, he's jumping now, but you need bodies on blade. You need Sigma Shield or Matrix. You need Harmony Orb, Armor Pack. You need your Tracer in position. Like, as many of those, like, boxes you can check, you just significantly increase the chances of getting um, kills with your blade. Monkey Bubble, awesome. Armor pack, awesome. Harmony orb, awesome. Discord on a target, awesome. Monkey jump, awesome. D D uh, Diva, Sigma shield, whatever, awesome. I mean, even things like rock. Like you can't go, guys, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? But he needs to match his tank's aggression. Your tank should be initiating this, not your Genji. And he comes, you know, within a millimeter of just getting pinned and dying. That, that, that is not good. That is bad. And you can see this because yes, they get space. Yes, Boston backs off. But what does his blade actually accomplish? He goes in with blade and what's his first thought as soon as he blades? Oh shoot, I'm going to die. I've got to get out of dodge. And that's not the case if he waits three seconds, whereas, you know, four seconds, five seconds, whatever, even wait to get monkey bubble back. Then when you go in, you can actually commit to kills. Your team can actually push it. You'll have Discord. You'll have your jump. It's not, like, exactly, it's not even a zoning blade. Like, Boston just gets a reset for free. Is that a good pin for fusions? Yeah, it was fine. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, if it's a short pin onto a wall, then sure. So this is a bad blade. And if you really want to get smart with it, it's a really bad blade because it feeds ult charge. But, I mean, I guess he wasted a couple of seconds. This is fine, I guess. Like, following up on the flex, good. He has the 180 speed of like a 16 cylinder, 16 wheeler, 14, 15 ton Mack truck, but I guess it works. <clears throat> okay, again, he's in a good position here. Now, I'm curious to see what Shock is going to try and do here. Um, with the ultimates that they have, I would much rather prefer them to like play it more patiently, play to get picks, play to get a point, because you're not going to stop them from touching. And with primal, I'd, I'd rather primal on, on point than primal on choke. But yeah, see, I don't, I don't like this from Shock. This is this feels lucky. Like Fusions doesn't land his shatter. And Halo is 94% on beat, but if he's got beat, Shock loses this. They might still lose this. They don't. They do? They don't? It's fine. Play it safe. Nice, nice little right click there, guys. Did you guys see that? All right. My man. Nice kill. Halo's a good Lucio. This is nice. One, two... Three! Beautiful. That was good.
So yeah, I, I did not like Shock's game plan there. They got a little lucky. Uh, Uprising misplayed it, but uh, honestly, that blade is very concerning though. Like, chat, and I'm saying that, I'm not just coaching Supers Genji just because, you know, fun and giggles. If you're a Genji player and you're watching this and you're going, why are my blades never, I never get anything on my blades. I don't care if you're playing with a Rissa, a Reinhardt, a Wrecking Ball, or double off tank with a flanking Hog Zarya. Okay, your ranked experience. Um, or a Hog Ball, right? What are, are your tanks doing anything? If not, don't blade. Now, I don't mean my hog isn't walking forward to me. If your hog is on a flank here and they're looking at your hog, that's when you blade. If your ball just rolled through them, that's when you blade. If your Reinhardt is walking forward swinging, that's when you blade. When your Rissa shields start spamming, throws out a halt, that's when you blade. Because yes, there's not bodies on you, which isn't optimal. You want bodies like hulks of meat that can protect you. But... It means that there's attention being drawn elsewhere so you can get away with your blade. Right? Even Nanoblade, you want to make sure that your team is doing something. Do you have Harmony Orb? Is your Tracer in position? Is your Widow, did your Widow grapple up the high ground? Like imagine this, you Nanoblade through this choke right when your Widow grapples the high ground. Who does the team look at? The Widow literally standing out in the open or the Nanoblade in the back lane? You create a dilemma to where maybe even if they hard counter your blade and you die, you win the fight because they're all focused on you and your team is just like, la, 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 killing everybody. Hog on the flank, you blade, they either, you know, deal with the hog that's going to kill the back line or they deal with the blade that's going to kill your front line. Pay attention to what your team is doing when you're blading, guys. Pay attention when you're looking for blade. You don't even have to be, like, if you're a, a, a shot caller, if you're in voice comms, you can call it out. That's obviously best case scenario, but just use your eyes. And that's for really every ult, but especially Blade. Yeah, so again here, I'm, I'm really... I don't <laughs> I don't really know what Boston's running right here. I think Punk just is, you know, he's whipping out the hog. There's a clear... Obviously, pro players don't do stuff like this just because they think they're funny and they've given up on hope and life. Like, Punk legitimately has the reason why he's playing hog. Maybe he's doing it for the Blade. Maybe he's doing it to punish the Sigma pick. There's a reason why. I don't understand why, but there's a reason why. Um... I don't want to comment on the Uprising setup because this is a very niche, weird strat that they're running, so I don't want to spend a lot of time analyzing it. The, the importance is still the same, though. You, um, right now, especially because they're not on Sigma and Rhine, it is incredibly important for Super to off-angle and poke out these tanks. Fusions and Punk should feel constantly harassed by Super. 24-7, he should be harassed. Hog dive, yeah, of course. Hog dive, my bad. I, was, I, I forgot the name, Hog dive. Yeah, I forget. That's something that you guys all the time... Uh, very, very common composition to play. And you can see this here, by the way. Super can play a little bit more aggressively on these angles because, like, what's going to stop him? You know? Ash? Winston? Diva? No. It's legit. Just color hex. That's the only person that can contest him. Whereas he can get um, help from his monkey. So he still has to be careful here. But yeah, you see, you see, you see what's happened here? Where's Monkey? Where did Monkey? Yeah, so, so look at this, guys. This wasn't an accident. He jumps up here, Smurf follows him. Color Hex is gone. Maybe a little early from Super, though. Gotta keep an eye on that. Jerry gets domed. You're gonna dive Monkey, sure. And again, like, why kill Backline when Monkey's right there? Like, what help is Monkey going to get? He's getting no help whatsoever. And by the way, nice job, Super. Matching his team's aggression. All on the same page. Gonna win the fight. Nice job. Dashing and then deflecting. I don't know if that was purposeful or not. Yeah, see, this was not purposeful. Um, I mean, it was... He, he goes for the hog because the hog is close and low and discorded. The deflect is just like, oh, shoot, I should deflect. This isn't him reacting to his brig maybe getting hooked. But still a good play. Okay, and that's it. Okay, two maps down. Consensus. Mostly timed right, gets a little antsy with his play sometimes. So that's now the second blade where I feel like he's gone too early before Smurf or his team was ready to. So now it's not gone from an anomaly, it's gone to maybe this might be a pattern. We need to keep an eye on this. Um, Shuriken accuracy was competent. Positioning was iffy, was better on Hanamura than it was on the Koth maps. Um, matching his team's aggression, mostly okay outside of the blade plays. Do you think Super would do well against a higher tier team? I think Shock would beat most teams with Super in a Genji. Yeah. Question about Brig. What if they removed her AoE heal and they replace it, keep the armor as the heal effect, put it straight to the DPS roll, remove her? Um, I don't think Brig is that far off from being unbalanced right now. I think she's uh, her rework 
made it her a lot more fun and interesting to play against. I think the problem right now is how she's so much. So there's so many like backlines are so stupid squishy right now. Like Tracer got buffed, Genji got buffed, Winston got buffed. So now if you don't have a Brig in your backline, you basically, or, or you're not running like Moira Lucio, you just get dove and you die. Like Ana Lucio, it's, you can't, it's so hard to peel. You know, Zen Lucio, it, you can't peel, you just die. So it's like this awkward situation where Brig is almost a necessary evil because DPS from dive have been power creeped so high that backlines just die. Like, have you ever played Zen right now and tried to 1v1 to Genji? It's misery right now. It's absolute misery. It's always been hard, but now it's misery. I don't, Tayo, I, I bet, I bet the farm. Tayo is not, a, I mean, Tayo plays Genji, but Tayo is not being picked up for Genji. Like, I don't know the shocks internal things, but I would be shocked, no pun intended, if Tayo was being picked for Genji. Tayo is not being picked for Genji. He's he's playing for hitscan, and he's and you're like, well, but they already have this hitscan. I guarantee you that Tayo is being picked for either a hitscan or a hitscan leader role. That's why they picked Tayo. Because somebody on shock isn't cutting it when it comes to communication. There's my hot take. Ready for battle. Tayo is a very, very loud player. Very, very demanding, very, very leadership. I tell you what to do. I know what to do in the situation. Kind of player. <clears throat> and so he's he must fill a need there with shock. That's my guess. Are Rascals comes back? I don't know. I don't I've never coached or worked with Rascal before. I'm just telling you what Tayo's good at, so that's my guess. Posture check, thank you. Miss Crusty and Boston? Yeah, it feels bad. Okay, so they it was confirmed then. Yeah. Alright. So <clears throat> We're going to keep an extra eye on Blades here. Boston rolls out with a spawn camp brawl. That's fine. It means that they're going to get at least two fights in this uh, point. Probably just two. Shock needs to play this slow. Super needs to get the off angle, punish tanks, not die. Get the off angle, punish tanks, not die. Does that sound familiar? That's basically how Genji's played right now. We got Mr. Shock in here with double jump. That's what we're dealing with. Bought a new AC. Just installed it. Nice, nice. Like right now... This is fine. Push the Genji. Push the Genji. Waste his time. And he can commit dash like this because if they drop, he comes back up. If they stay on high ground, he drops. So it's fine. Yeah, that's that's good on Boston. Good good stuff from Boston. Now all I have to do is survive and keep pushing. This is where I really, really feel like this is just something that Shock practiced, but I really don't feel like Shock's comp is good here. Like, Shock is probably going to win this because Shock is Shock, but I really don't feel Shock is playing the best comp for the situation. I don't really know what would be the best comp right now. I'd have to think about it. But they, they're not not—they're at a disadvantage in this matchup. Is Brawl worth playing right now? Um, Without bans, I don't think Brawl is super good, but it's still okay. I hate Brawl so much, though. It is my least favorite. I would ten times rather watch Arissa and Ash and Genji and Winston than I would. Like, Arissa's not fun to play. But the heroes, the comps that she plays around are pretty fun to watch. Brawl is just... There's a lot of complexity to it, but you can't even see. Half the complexity is so hard to watch. Just, I didn't like... I know it's a hot take. And I know everybody's like, like, you know, Stockholm Syndrome with goats. But I hated goats, too. So this is what you want him to be doing. So, chat, you see you see what's ha happening right now. What's, what's, what is shock trying to do right now what is the game plan and what is super's role in this game plan turn on your brains guys it's time to learn what is the game plan for uprising and what is shock trying to do about it tyo is not mechanically disadvantaged he just has a small hero pool or he did that might have changed All right, what are we doing? What what is what is uprising trying to do? What is shock trying to do? What is super roll in the composition? Pressure with the 120 right click pressure. Okay, so pressure, sure. Kill semi on brig before shock can set up dives. Sure. Force engage by pushing cart. Sure. Force shock to come to them while they're well defended. Yeah. Force them off high ground. Trying to close space. Okay. Yeah. So basically, 
Uprising wants to play this really, really fast. So they want Shock to rotate to a point to where they can rush them. Do you guys remember what was what Uprising was doing dive on Oasis, where you know the Shock would backline would start to rotate, and that's when they would dive. We talked about that a lot. Same concept here, except this time it's brawl instead of dive. You initiate when the backline is starting to rotate, and then you push them. Now, if I was sh uh, Uprising, I would like to wait just a little longer so that maybe uh, Violet and Twilight come out a little bit further. Maybe just a little bit further, if you could. But this is close enough. Now, what Super's job here is his job is to make this push as painful as you possibly can. Absolutely as painful as you possibly can to where they walk forward, they try and kill Briggs in. If Uprising wants to, not, there's nothing they can do. These guys will die if, if, if Uprising wants to kill them. The question is, is how much will it cost, right? And with new shotgun Genji, it should cost a lot. And the priority targets are generally going to be tanks right now. Because during Moyer, during Cole, it's going to be it's going to be tricky. So yeah, he's prioritizing tanks. I, that dash is too early. You do not need to dash until you are forced to dash or the person is low HP. Look at Super right now. Is anybody looking at Super right now? Is Super being shot at at all right now? No, nobody's paying attention to Super. Nobody. He's not taking any damage. There's zero threat to Super right now. So why are you dashing to go back to your team where you can no longer shoot people in the back? This is a mistake. This is a bad mistake. And Super's pressure, Super's value, just went <laughs> bad. This is bad. In fact, Super's now more at risk, less value, and building his ult that much slower. I knew it. That's a, that's a major error. Major error. You do not do that. You hold your angle, you keep spamming, they turn to look at you, you run away. Again, I just feel like Boston must mess this up because Shock is playing a better comp. Or uh, Uprising is playing a better comp for this. He needs to establish an angle again. It's going to be hard though because Colorhex is going to stop him from doing that or he's going to do his best. I mean, that's pretty darn good right there, boys. Where was this smart, handsome, mechanically talented super 20 seconds ago? That's really good. Like, you force a split, Color Hex misses a lot of shurikens, uh, and that's it. Like, yeah, well done. Like, obviously, Color Hex is not the one who dies. Myungbong somehow screws up and dies, but Color Hex is literally out of the fight in one HP. Well done, super. You don't even need to blade this now. Yeah, you don't even need to blade. Yeah. So they should cap. Yeah, they're gonna cap. Scouting a little bit. Are they gonna touch? They're gonna touch? They're gonna touch? They are gonna try and touch, but no, they're not. Okay, so now... Now Shock has to spread out. Shock has to go... <whistles> spread out. Um... I love how they have crazy synergy. Winston is insane is considered harassment, according to Twitch. Thank you, Twitch, very much. Insane is crazy insane is now a permitted term. You're welcome, guys. So now Shock needs to spread out, spam from a lot of different angles. So there's Zen and the Genji. I don't know why I'm feeling like throwing gang signs up here. Um, and look to punish. And by the way, chat, when does Shock pressure Uprising? Not dive, hard dive, but pressure. When? When Uprising is doing what? We, let's learn. Let's evolve. Always pressure, but when do you turn up the notch? When? Rotating. <laughs> yes, when they're rotating. When they're pressing W, chasing them down, that's when you turn up the heat. Exactly. And where would you like to take the rotational pressure? When your supports and your tanks and your DPS can all see. You wouldn't want to punish the shock or the uprising for rotating here. You wouldn't want to punish the uprising for rotating out here. You want to punish them right around here because you everybody can see everything that's going on right here. Exactly. Brawl is fine. Brawl is perfectly normal comp on first. With the bands, I don't know what was meta, but Brawl on Dorado first or Root CC first is pretty good.
I don't think this is not a compositional choice. Somehow, Myungmung just dies and stuff falls apart. You notice how Super's positioned himself, chat? Is he on cart? Is he with his monkey? No, he is on an angle, spamming up. There's nobody that can shoot him right now. It is crucial that he and Striker do not get their cooldowns forced, though. And it's crucial for Smurf not get his cooldowns forced, either. Okay, chat, what do you guys think about this rotation from Boston? This is really good. Why is this really good, chat? So Winston is going to get a lot of cleave here, so they need to pressure Winston early, but it's good because there's no open space for Zen to spam. Super does not have a great uh, opportunity to spam a lot of people here, and as long as Boston keeps the tempo up, maybe even flips the map, it's gonna be hard for Shock to get value here. But Fusions just stands out there and dies. Like, all they need to do is sit here, push out, and just touch cart. Like, if you can't... This is just Fusions feeding. If you can't... Like, if you can't kill anything, don't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't just stand out in the open for no reason. But let's look at it from Super's perspective. Is Super doing the right thing here, chat? Yes, he is. Why? Because right click, angle... Spamming tanks, Discord. Beautiful. Very nice. Beautiful. Really well done. Little, <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he, he overstays his welcome, for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I spoke too soon, I'm sorry. This is still very winnable for Boston. Okay, maybe not. This is not good for Super, he's facing tanks. <sighs> you know, you guys ever like a look at those you know, Overwatch highlight channels, and the Genji gets like a 4k deflect, and then just pops Blade and just chops the poor half HP Ana to death. This is what we're looking at here. You've just got like three kills, you've just stuck a bunch of people, you have a spawn advantage, and they're all like low, and you Blade? Why? Don't say, but Blade is just really bad against Brawl. Yes, but it's still useful. Just shut up, Neko chan No, it's not Alpha, it is actually throwing. Terrible blade, man. Come on, man. Like, it's still a tool. You can force cooldowns out of it. That's just so sucky. Uprising should win next fight. So this, this, by the way, what has what is Super doing now that he failed to do on that Hanamura rotation? Do you guys see it? Do you guys see what's happening right now? Do you see what's changed? Do you see, do you see my man learning? Yeah, he's actually scouting aggressively here. He's not doing this sissy scouting. I think I know where they're going to go, so I'm just going to sit here. He's actually sticking his nose in there and scouting. And what is this going to tell him right now? What does this say? What does this say to you guys? What does this say to you guys? What is, what is Super screaming in comms in his little high-pitched squeaky voice? Hi, guys! Hi. Okay? And it's like, like, tickle me Elmo voice. What's he saying? Guys? They're not coming high ground, they're going low ground. Sounds like a cartoon character, okay? But yeah, he's, they're going low ground. That's huge. That's super, 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 super important. Because now, they can preemptively set up around this location and not act like morons and set up around this location. So right now, Super probably should go right around here. Let's watch how his team reacts. Look at it, Twilight's in position, Striker's in position. Uh, I don't really like Super's position. Super should be here. He's got a much better angle. I mean, you just saw it last fight, and he's also will kind of body block for uh, Twilight a little bit here. Not great. Uh, trying to deflect grab. Okay. All right. Ha! Color Hex, please! Don't do this, son. What is Color Hex doing? 
His team is inside. This is this is what Super did on Hanamura first. You guys remember this? This is the exact same error that Super made, except it's even more egregious here. Where's the follow-up? Kalagas is a good, good Genji. But there's no follow-up. There's zero chance of this blade killing anybody. Like, where's the blade now? Would be nice to have blade now, y'all. For, for, for honestly, for super too. <laughs> but yeah, I do not like super's angle here. I did. He was staying back here and just shooting shields. That's not. That's what. That's what color hex was set up on first Hanamura defense. That's bad. Don't do that. Play the angle. Play the angle here. Force them to force you out. If they don't force you out, you kill everybody. If they do force you out, they're wasting time, and your team can kill people. By the way, did you guys see the video on the, the SVB put up between he and Flats on the Reinhardt pen? Where if you like hit it with the edge of the left shoulder, it's more likely to suck. So if like Fusions aims this pin like two degrees this way, he's gonna pin super. But on right side it bounces, pretty interesting. I won't go into it super depth right now because you want to focus on the Genji, but yeah, pretty interesting. Left side's the sweet spot, right side is the boop spot. Okay, again, what is Super actually doing here that's so stinking important? That is going to help his team so much. What's he doing? I don't care if, like, I need, I need, I need, like, farming and scouting. Exactly. Farming and scouting. There is no surprises for Shock's backline anymore. There's no more, oh, we're going to explode out, we're going to catch your backline, you're going to die. Super is always telling, guys, be careful, they're flipping the map, get out of dodge. And what do you think our Brigands in are doing? They're already in high ground, right? Now, these guys do it regardless of the rotation, but they're ready. You know, no surprises for anybody here. And Super's going to get set up, he's going to get a good angle, and he's ready to go. And right there, I, okay, okay, again, why is Super dashing? Is he position screwy? Okay, yeah, he's a little too close. I don't want super here. I want super here, spamming, and then he double jumps up here, and then he can spam them as they go through. I don't like, I really don't like this dash. This dash is scary to me. But again, shock is prepared for the rotation because super is actually hustling and scouting. He's hustling and scouting. He's not being AFK. He's not sitting around. He's hustling. He's getting his button gear. He's giving his team the information. So that the element of surprise, the element of speed, gone. It's gone. So well done. Here comes the blade. Oh, he's waiting. Ah, oh, it's big. That's big. He's wait. He's trying to force. They're trying to force beat uh, with the uh, rally, which is really really smart. But again, here, let's look at super's positioning. You guys see it? Where is super positioned here? What has he got? What, you, what has he got, Genji mains? What has he got? On the angle, right? What are they gonna do? Do they, they either have to stop and force out super or they take damage to the butt cheeks? And he has dash, he has deflect, he's got available escapes. This is great. Halo doesn't beat. And now it's just, it's whatever. It's just snowball. They're going to push it all the way in. Maybe not the best blade, because I think he underestimated how soon they would touch. But yeah, now it's just clean up. Okay. Don't care. Oh, he actually dies. Okay. So, I think the thing that Super has done exceptional this round is he's been very good at scouting. Very good at scouting. But the problem is been sometimes super is a not at the best angle that he could be at when teams are pushing through chokes right so he's super 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 passive sometimes instead of angling himself consistently that happened on here um and that where he should have been here and that also happened a little bit here although this might have been because he wasn't sure he thought maybe they were flipping the map so that's understandable um and then also i'm gonna stay on it but it's a bad blade here bad 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 blade and lastly 
He's right clicking, right clicking, right clicking, right clicking, and then dashing through them for no real reason. Not to confirm a kill. I'm not attempting a dance move right now. You got to save that for later, Typho. Um, not attempting a kill. <clears throat> and he's not being pressured either. So he's not dashing out to be safe. He's actually putting himself in Morris. Because if you remember when he did this here, where he was up top, he's right click, right click, right click, right click, dash, and then he immediately dies. That's the ironic. That's the ironic thing, rather. So, not good. It's going to be a lot harder for Boston to play this into attack, though. Because, um, you know, like dive supports actually have good positioning to start with. But the concept's the same. He needs to angle. He needs to spam. When Boston rushes, he needs to turn up the heat. And the same concept applies here, by the way, too, about a boss that probably is not going to sit on cart this whole time. They'll probably push cart to a run here, and then they're going to abandon cart to rush somebody when they see it. So if they do anything funky or weird with their splits, Super needs to scout it. So Super needs to be perma-orbed as much as he possibly can, and he needs to be scouting. Meanwhile, Shock, uh, especially Smurf, needs to be basically doing nothing. Don't force cooldowns. Let Super have orb and scout. Because right now he's like, okay, it looks like they're going under, maybe going under, maybe going under. They're still on cart. Right now, Super being on an angle is less important than his scouting. So if he feels like he can't safely scout from here, then he shouldn't be here. If he feels like he can't effectively scout from here, then he can't be here. There's really, this is really the only spot for Super to be to be safe and to scout, so him being here is fine. Okay, so there, there's this. Here comes the... Whoop, pushing main, 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 main. Dashes out. Now this is the dash that he should have done on first. Look at what he does. He's angled, he's scouting, he's on low ground, which is dangerous, but he kind of has to be here. But look, when does Super actually dash, chat? He can also solo contest payload, yes. When does Super actually dash? Yes, when he's forced to. If, if Uprising ignores him, if Jerry ignores him, he does not leave. He only leaves when he's forced. He makes them do something about it. This is a not a great dash. This is this should have been the high ground. Let me look at this again. Yeah, this is this is this is how you die. <laughs> he, he he should have died here. But it, but it, but good good stuff on shock. Like there was Discord there, Smurf is there, Choyobin's there. Everybody's doing something at the same time. We're whipping out the Torp Hammer, boys. We've been good. Super has been mostly good, but we're whipping out the Torp Hammer. Dash to high ground. Don't take 1v1s with a Moira, you stupid bot. Son of a gun, dude. This is what I was talking about. Don't dash into the tiny little room. Dash to high ground and keep spamming. And if you're gonna do it, you better darn well hunt your shuriken, son. Be nice. No. Okay, fine. Super, well done. Well done. Well done, my son. I'm so proud of you. You got a kill. And your team is carrying you. Well done, son. Well done. Yeah, he did deserve teabag here. Although I think Boston still lost. So there's that. But yeah, you plats out there, you feel a little better now? It even happens to Super's Genji, a main tank player. Currently filling on Genji. Actually, that, that doesn't make me... That, that shouldn't make you feel any better at all. Never mind. That, yeah. I gave a perfect example, for example of what not to do. Good. I, I, at this point, it's like, you know, I should be surprised when I'm disappointed. But, you know, I'm, I'm no longer surprised when I'm disappointed now. You never fail to disappoint. Okay. This is, this is really a little, a little clunky from Super. Um, it's a little risky. You really don't want to get this close. But he does dash out. And he dashes out. Yeah, again, his dashes is like he, he dashes and then he just kind of sits here. He needs to dash and respect the. I know he's like he's just not respecting Boston enough. He needs to get up here or he needs to dash here and then he can turn up the aggression. He's like dashing, but he's not really dashing out and it's making me nervous. And it forces deflect there and there's still a window where he could have died. That's a fine blade. Again, you're noticing that Super is coming from angles. Why is it good when you can to come from angles with your blade rather than just like to blade straight straight into the enemy team? I just had an Austra Australian accent straight into the enemy team. No, like I don't know where that came from. Why is it better? 
Splits attention, yeah, number one. Make them turn around, sure. They have to turn around to get you, yeah. You're, under, you're on, not under pressure, invisible when you start, exactly. It's confusion and fear, right? If I came up, if I came up to you and I said, hello, you'd be like, oh, hey, and you shake my hand, right? I hope so. I don't know the COVID thing or not, but if, if I come up behind you and I go, hi, right behind you, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit unsettling, okay? For more one reason than one. And that's basically what blading from an angle is. They're not expecting you. It throws them off. It scares them. It's panic. It's sheer terror. Mental war, mental battles, right? You win the mind games, okay? Um, and all, obviously, your entry is safe, too, because everybody's seen the meme of Genji's getting rocked and swung and booped and flashbanged and all that and all that jazz, right? But look at Super's blade entry here. Now, if he gets scouted, that's a problem. You guys remember what he did on Oasis uh, Gardens? Same kind of thing. He goes to this flank blade. But if he's not scouted... Look at this. No damage. No damage. No damage. No damage. Bang. So zero damage at all on his entry. Not a bad blade. Not a bad blade at all. If you saw a spiral IRL, you would turn on 360 degrees and walk away. Is that a joke? Like you Because at this point, I feel like I've read that and everyone's like, cool, 360 degrees, you really should just be making a circle, right? You would turn 360 degrees and just walk right through me. Okay, all right, poggers, let's go. All right, extra spam. They are on McCree, which means that there, you know, there's a lot more punishment on Genji screwing up. So, the win condition is the same. It's just going to be a little bit harder to stay on those angles. I don't really like this. This is not. This, this is not really the picture that you want to see, especially when they're on McCree. Like, you are one flashbang away from kicking the bucket, my dear. This is not good. I don't know what the plan is. I assume it's like a rally engage, but this ain't it, Chief. Like, this is not it. I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at here, but it's making me uncomfortable. You still want to be on an angle. Be careful, and maybe you're even AFK on the angle, but you're not starting here. This is, this is bad news, son. And again, you notice how quickly he had to use his dash there? What did his dash actually accomplish? Nothing. And not only that, remember on the Hanamura first rotation where Boston rotated into the right really fast and he dashed melees in and he almost gets a kill? Well, what's the difference between that punishing the rotation and what's happening here? What's the difference? Who's leading the charge here right now? Who's leading the charge on this punished rotation? Is Kree not to be careful? Yeah, he is. He's leading the charge. That's bad. That's bad. Let your monkey go. Because now, look at Super. He's dashed out. Smurf is in. Striker is in. And Super is out. And not only that, but he very well could have died. So not only is his value lower, his risk was higher. That's a, <laughs> that's a bad trade, my friend. It's a bad trade. That's like going to McDonald's and paying six, you know, sixty-five dollars for a Happy Meal. You know what I'm saying? Like this ain't this 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 is not this is not the move. You need to be on the angle. Now you can dash. Now you could be on your angle, dropping, ending, dashing through if you want to. That gets kills. That's safer. That's more likely to build dual charge. This is bad. Smurf just goes in and they just go. This is why McCree. Is it super popular with dive now because the power creep on Tracer Genji Winston? He is very squishy right now. Kree is very squishy. Kree is not an anti-dive hero at the top level. Not even close. He was briefly an anti-dive hero when he was paired with like Brig and um, May and stuff. And he was briefly a very good anti-dive hero. Well, a much better anti-dive hero when they buffed his HP to 250. But he's not. Not good. Jerry's back on Reaper. Big surprise. Again here, I'm questioning his timing. Why? Why? You're instantly going to be turned around and focused. Why? Why are you going in now? Look at this. Look, 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 look. And now look at Super. Do you see this, chat? Do you not see the problem with this? He's getting sloppy. He's getting sloppier as the game is going on. And he's not getting he's getting away with it, but he's getting sloppier. 
And the thing is, is it's not even like, oh, he's getting away with it. It doesn't matter. No, he's actively doing less now. It's not just, oh, he doesn't care. He's doing greedier plays. He's doing greedier players, but he's still getting less out of it than if he played more passively. Because if he goes in now or actually with, in with his monkey, not only would he be safer, but he'd be doing more damage. So it's not just always playing more aggressively. He's playing stupider. That's what it is. More stupidly. What if he dies to bomb? You know what I'm saying? Like, what if he dies to bomb there? Very realistic thing because he doesn't have dash. And meanwhile, Smurf is actually doing stuff. And where, where's my Genji? Genji's out of the fight. Right? This is why I talk about sync your aggression with your team. Specifically your tanks. Hey, guys. Good to see you, mate. No, you didn't need that. You didn't need that. You don't want that. I mean, I guess it's okay. There was... Eh. I won't nitpick that one as much because there was a couple more people alive. But you could kind of read the tempo of the fight. Look at the temp HP of the enemy team. Probably not really necessary. Okay, see, so th th this is it. This is not hard. Okay? Now, not every dive is going to be hardcore super early like this is. Like, this is a pretty risky dive from Choyobin. To go in this hard. But like this is why look at look at the timing here. Ball slam, Winston land, bubble, super dash. There's your Genji play right there. If you're playing with an Arissa or Reinhardt, same concept. Genji doesn't lead the way for Arissa Reinhardt. Your Arissa puts out her shield, she starts to spam, Genji goes in. Reinhardt goes starts to swing, goes in, Genji goes in. That's how you do it. My computer is low. Unlucky. I'm going to plug in my computer really fast. But the timing is everything. Like, if if you're putting Genji and you're looking to go hard in the enemy team when your Ryan is backing off because he's got low shield or your Rissa's shield just broke, maybe your ball's rolling out after he's already gone in, you got to be really careful. And you certainly don't want to be going before your tanks do anything. Like, this is it. This is why playing Genji this way works. You've got big, you know, damage sponges, essentially, in front of you that just let you do whatever you want. This is dive. This is how you're supposed to play Genji. He's already built half of a blade. Nice. I don't really like chasing ball. Yeah, I do not I like that. No, don't do it, super. Don't do it, super. Don't do it. Okay. Alright, chat. Buckle in. Here we go. Here we go. Rally? <laughs> Did you see that? Oh, yes! In slow motion! 1080p! Just kidding, it's my stream. Wait, clang! That's great. But at least my man is going in with his monkey, alright? I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't nitpick. Gee, look at that. Look at how hard Super was pocketed. Look at how much help he had. Who would have thunk? All right. Victory. All right, chat. Let's lay down the verdict. After all this agony of how long has it been? Almost two hours of tank gameplay on Genji. What's the verdict? Verdict was decent. Relatively smart. Micro was shaky. His shuriken actually was okay, but every, everything else about his micro was shaky. Um, the big thing to note is that he was not consistent with matching his aggression with his Winston. He was not consistent with his angles, the good angles. And the last thing is that he got really sloppy last map, especially the last little bit of the last map. 
got really sloppily at the end. But much, I, I mean, unironically better than I thought. Unironically better than I thought. Um, his macro, obviously, his macro knowledge clearly showed. It just came down to, like, it was actually ironic, the fact that the, the biggest, my biggest issues with Super weren't even his mechanical play. It was the fact that sometimes he was just desynced with Smurf. Now, what would be an interesting dynamic, something to think about, is was some of that conflict with Smurf or desync with Smurf because Smurf and Super have never played together? Or have they in Arisa Ryan Because they're both main tanks, right? And they, and they flip-flop, right? Have they played together a lot? You see what I'm saying, chat? They have played together. But how much? Okay, but not nearly as much. Like Control Center, because of the Arisa Ryan stuff, yeah. But that, that, is, that is something that I would be interested to, to feel out. Monkey Ball Dive? Yeah, sure. But definitely it seems like they play less, and I wonder if that had any impact on their, their timing. Because it felt a lot of the time Super was leaving as Smurf is going in. Um, and, that, and that concerns me. So overall, I definitely think that Shock was... Um, Shock played this relatively well. I think Super played this relatively well. But, you know, clearly not a Genji player. How Lucio is supposed to position against the Shock? Lucio's job is legitimately to stay alive and disrupt dives as much as possible. Because when you're running Lucio Moria, especially with like a Reaper Genji, you are the dive target. There is nobody that they can dive. Like you can't, like Zarya, maybe, but you can't dive Ryan, you can't dive Moira, you can't dive Genji, you can't dive Reaper. You are the squishiest, easiest to kill target. So you have to play carefully. Um, Halo died a lot of times to early dives because he wasn't just, just not anticipating it as much as he could have. How do you play dive in a Reaper Moira lose the brawl and now clear dive target? So you have to play patiently. You have to play hardcore for angles and look for look for ways to force their cooldowns. So you saw how like Shock was playing really, really well in angles, and then they would go in hard pressure, but then they wouldn't like just die on it. Like their first dive, if they didn't kill anybody on their first pressure dive, they wouldn't just die. They'd get back out, rinse and repeat, and try again. And you always try and do that when they're rotating. Uh, it's also, I will say, it's a lot easier to beat that type of comp um, if you can play Briggs in and you can play your Briggs in, in a safe spot. Because with Discord, it's just so much easier to kill stuff. It would have been a lot harder to play on a Lucio dive into that. I mean, your backline would have been safer, but it would have been at the expense. It would have been really hard to kill stuff. Does Tracer try to play in the same way as Genji in that comp in terms of poke? Yeah, um, against a comp like that, there's literally nothing that can poke out a Tracer. So Tracer could just play angles, play patient. I'm at, thank you for the sub. Um... And just basically spam. And then when we do go in, she goes in a little bit more aggressively. She just can't get a recall or too many of her blinks for us before you, the Winston actually does something, though. Also, for Briggs in, dive against Brawl with Genji. How is the Briggs supposed to position? Her job is basically just to make sure that Reaper doesn't get TPs on Zen. So closer to Zen. Closer to Zen, you can whip shot, tank, or DPS aggression. Especially because they're running Reaper Genji, so your Zen is in a lot of danger. So you need to protect your Zen. You, you won't you don't it's weird because your brig like never actually brawls in that comp um but your if the get zen dies once you need to uninstall his brig there like it's that important why aren't teams playing ash as much right now i think there's some but slightly less so the reason teams aren't playing as much ash is because dive is more meta right now because there's no orissa because there's no orissa it's easier to stage dives because it's easier to stage dives it's harder to play ash because you're more likely to get dove and the reason it's easier to stage dive against orissa is because halt Halt screws up dive tanks that are trying to take angles, and you shoot them. And so if you can't halt them and shoot them, you don't play Arisa. Or you don't play Ash. Actual scam streamer. I'm not refunding points. Screw you guys. <laughs> Would dive have been... I literally said this at the start of the stream. If you're not there, I can't. it's not my problem. Would dive have been better if Ana had been playing instead of Zen? No, dive would have been worse. Dive into what the, uh, the uh, blah, 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 uprising would have been playing would have been worse. Because they had no damage. If you don't have Discord, how are you going to kill anything against that? It's really hard. Why is it the sh what makes a shot keep winning even in the situations when they're disadvantaged? Good comms, knowing how to clutch. Good synergy. Good comms, good, good synergy, really. It's the same thing that just makes the shot good, period. It's just good synergy. Um, mm, stream is rigged. Why they even be playing Lucio? Because they want to try and do fast rotates into the back line. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Lucio in that comp as much. I think it would have been better with a uh, Brig. Mm, I don't know. I would have to think about that because it's like your rotations are so much slower, so you're more vulnerable in rotations, but you're also less vulnerable to dive. So I don't know. That's tough. 
Do you try to go closer to poke to get inspired? You want to try and get inspired, but you have to be careful because you are a kill target for that Karl. Uh, even John Grawl. How do you refund points then? How do you refund points? I don't know how to refund points. What are your thoughts on having alt accounts? I mean, I think it's fine. I think from like a player grinding rank standpoint, it takes a lot of pressure off. Because if you're like, I have my main, I'm in masters, I want to stay masters, but you're like, I need to practice this, you, you play you play your other alt account and you don't care as much. And it like actually helps you to be in an improvement mindset. What if, uh, I already answered that. Lucio Brig maybe? Yeah, but Lucio Brig's a little harder now because Genji is so strong and because you're going to take a lot more damage, so it's harder to outheal. Like, Brig Lucio is a good comp, but you have to be crisp with it. You have to be real crisp. Send me a bank account number. Awesome, thank you. Um, mods can edit points as big verse. Okay, interesting. I didn't know that. What are your thoughts on the fundamentals of ult tracking? So the fundamentals of ult tracking are going down the list as quickly as possible and then being efficient. Um, a hip tent, tip or hint, <laughs> tent or hip <laughs> um, is to actually... As soon as you know a fight's lost, to start ult tracking in your head. Like, don't wait until like comms are quieted down to ult track. It should be like instantly, as fast as you possibly can. Because the thing with ult tracking is it takes practice, but also you want to make sure that you have a good structure. Just like you're, you know, working out or getting better at Overwatch or doing anything, you don't just want to like just grind and spend time at it. You want to like have a good structure to build around it. So making sure that you're as quick as you possibly can at ult tracking, um, and then making sure that you're going tanks, DPS supports is really like the fastest way to do it. Like structure it in your brain and then you'll, you'll have freedom away from that. <clears throat> but the fundamentals of alt tracking are important. Um, one thing that I think a lot of teams, especially in higher ranks, fail to do is understand why you're alt tracking. Because you're alt tracking so that you have an anticipation of what the enemy team will do. Like if you track, okay, they have support ults, guys. Okay, how does that really help what you're going to do if you don't try and plan around it, right? For example, we have Blade, they have Trance. Okay, guys, let's just go in with Blade. Well, that's not going to work. You know they have Trance. So you need to figure out how you're going to force Trance so you can get Blade. Or I'm going to use Blade to force Trance and then win after that. So if you're just ult tracking with a team and that's it, and you're not really thinking about what that the ults actually mean, then you're wasting your time ult tracking. So I really recommend, even in ranked, if you're the if you're going to try and practice ult tracking, when you track that they have a certain ult, try and think about what that means how you should play. Okay, guys, they have, they have you know, uh, Flux. So, and they have BAP window. So I'm gonna try as Sigma, I'm gonna try and save my shift to eat BAP window so that my BAP doesn't have to lamp BAP window. So I can, she can save lamp for the actual flux, if that makes sense. And I know that's complicated, but it's a good thing to practice. Uh, if Brig fell out of meta, would Arisa struggle? Yes. Yes. Because right now, it's my opinion that the reason that uh, Arissa is still meta, spam is still meta, is because you can just insert Brig and it's hard to dive. If you take Brig, you have to play like on a BAP or BAP Zen spam, and that, that really struggles into dive nowadays with how strong Tracer and Genji are. It's really, really hard. Like, it's not like the good old days, Hanzo, May, Arissa, Sigma. Like, it's hard to dive that since the buffs. So I think if Brig is out of meta, I think Arissa struggles. Yes. How do you play Brig against two flangers and Monkey? Um, I mean, that's, that's tough. You, you, there's no real way to shut all of them down, right? But you make sure that you've got an armor pack on whoever they're pressuring, and you hit your whip shot on whatever you can hit, right? Generally, the easier is monkey is to whip shot the monkey. Generally, it's more consistent. Um, you know, you hit your bash on the DPS when they dive, and you just hope for the best. But being consistent is important. Like, consistently landing the whip shot, consistently landing the bash, not playing out in the open, stuff like that. But if they have Brig out, what do you plan around that? Uh, well, you plan to lose. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, it depends on what you have. What if you don't know how to play around their ultimates like EMP and we're playing double shield? Well, think, think. How would you play around EMP if you're playing double shield? Come on. What are your supports? What are your DPS? Where are you playing on the map? Maybe you can use your Orisa on point as bait and your Sigma plays like the very edge and then your Orisa sees the Sombra decloak instantly fortifies, and then your BAP is playing super far back so that he can lamp the Arisa after fortify ends. But you gotta think about it, right? It's not, there's not like, oh, I know, I have all the information, so I'm gonna figure it out. You treat it like a math problem. You have all the information, and but it's gonna take practice to learn how to solve it. But if you're not even giving yourself the information, if you're not even ult tracking, and you're not even thinking about the ult tracking, then how are you gonna actually improve? Arisa's only good for pull? Yeah, I mean, pretty much, yeah. 
What are, in your opinion, the most necessary balance changes the games need? Ah, oh, man, I don't know. I think more frequent balance changes right now. I'm a big proponent of ending hero pools and doing more frequent balance changes, like every, you know, two or three months, and being more aggressive with them as well. And right now, I do think Genji needs to nerf. I don't like the deflect changes at all. I think it makes the entire hero way too easy to play and hard to play around. I think... So they need to make it somehow so that the other support heroes besides Brig are decent. Like, Bap is okay right now. Brig is okay right now. But Zen and Lucio just feel really bad to play. Um, obviously, Zen Brig is okay. But if, if a support isn't paired with Brig, it just instantly dies. Like, Tracer Genji just kill every support in the game for so little effort if you don't have a Brig right now. So I think Genji needs to be nerfed. I think Halt needs to be nerfed. And I think you need to find a way that you need to be able to not punish people that aren't running Briggs so hard. But again, I'm not a I'm not a I'm not an expert when it comes to balance changes. So that's that's my problem, but I don't have a solution because I don't have enough time. I don't I don't think about it enough. So I don't I'm not arrogant enough to suppose that I know the uh answer. Hey sorry Black Dracon. Split composition discussion? Yeah I do it in Ask Philo and I'll answer it later. Um a rock translocator in the sky. Holy cow. What do I think of Nanoblade meta in the comp? I think it's okay. I think the the problem with Nanoblade meta right now is um, Ana struggles when it comes to BAP with AOE healing. So like with the Arisa Sig Brig meta, that was more like a brawl, and Ana struggled to keep everybody up. BAP was just so much easier. Um, and also Lamp is good. But less damage too, like Salt Shaker's saying. Yeah, they, they, they boosted Genji to high heaven. Like damage, buff, Deflect buff, um, spread buff, fire rate buff. I, I'm a Genji main and haven't since I literally since I started playing the game, and I think it's too much. I don't mind watching him. I'm not complaining that he's meta right now. I think he's way more fun to watch than a lot of the other heroes. Like I think Genji Ash are fun to watch, but it, it's cause if we're going to want to move on from this meta eventually, something will need to happen to Genji and Brig and Orisa too. Okay. Uh, how would you do with Nanoblade that isn't bubbled? Or that is bubbled? Uh, sacrifice your Ana, wait for Bubble to be gone, and bash. Yeah, I mean, it's either that or just be like, guys, everybody shoot Bubble. Like, there's really not... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's not a lot you can do about it. The The reason you don't see it more in Owl is because Zarya, Genji, Ana isn't a great composition. So, that's why you don't see it a lot. But there isn't a lot you can do. You don't flux Nanoblade, Salt Shaker. That's, that's the biggest end in the world. But yeah, you could sacrifice one hero and tar bash it, maybe. The only way Brig won't be meta is if she doesn't do what she's designed to do, i.e. counter dive. I mean, pretty much, yeah. You could either do that, or you could lower her value elsewhere. Like, maybe you could nerf armor pack a little bit more. Maybe you could nerf Rally. Like, Rally is the strongest ult in the game right now. Um, yeah, Nanoblade I hear isn't... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can imagine that being rough. It's fun for the Genji, but not fun for everybody else. Rally is just stupid strong. Rally is so, 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 so strong. Relevant take. You think Flux is too high value for Nanoblade? No, it's not reliable. Because the problem with Nanoblade, well, the problem with Fluxing Blade is it relies on you being able to hit the Flux once he dashes in. But so when you're dashing in and slashing, because dash plus slash when you're nanoed is a one-shot, you can't activate the flux before he's already dashed out, if that makes any sense, right? If it's just normal blade, he has to slash twice. And when he slashes the second time, he goes up. But it is impossible for you to be able to, pre like almost, unless the Genji messes up, for you to actually flux something that's dash slash dash. You can't do it. If it's a normal blade, you can. But if it's nano blade, the, the margin of error is like this much. You have to be absolutely perfect. And if you whiff it, you lose the fight and you use flux. How do you play a Tracer and a Genji or Ash right now? It's just a matter of switch up here. I mean, Tracer's good. Tracer's good. Maybe she's not as good as a Genji or Ash, but she is one of the better DPS heroes right now. I mean, without seeing your game plan or your gameplay rather, so that would be the first thing I want to see is send in a VOD, look it over. Probably has to do with you not playing, getting onto flanks as much as you can. So, 
Like the thing that Tracer's good at is getting backline, right? Or at least angles, shooting people in the back. Not assassinating and killing everybody, but baiting attention. Kind of like what Super was doing in the spot. Starting on flanks, starting in angles. So if you're struggling to do that, I would look at your pathing. If you're not struggling to get on angles, but you're struggling to get value out of angles, I'd have to look at where you're positioned. But it, uh, Tracer doesn't really deal, isn't really affected by Genji or Ash very much. Uh, you have to be careful of Dynamite in your Ash 1v1s. And you have to be careful to avoid dueling Genjis because of the right click it makes it a little bit harder to deal with him. But that it doesn't you don't have to fundamentally change your playstyle as much in a Genji or Ash. So it's hard for me to really specify because it's a very specific question. Then flux his team to give time to focus him. But that's the problem, is it's like because Nanoblade is really strong, if they like Nanoblade plus Pack plus Winston jump, you can flux the other five people, but those two are still gonna kill half your team. Did you do a support bot review? I've done a lot of support bot reviews the last week. You can check out my YouTube. It's somewhere down below. Scroll down here. There's a YouTube. There's a Discord if you want to get coached. There's your donate if you want to give me all of your life savings and have your mom yell at you. And then you can follow me on Twitter and all that stuff.